This morning, I or today, I thought I would uh, talk about distraction because it can be a great coping uh, mechanism, a huge key in terms of helping us manage our life. So it can give us time for our emotions to catch up with our thinking, the changes and things that are going on in our life that, that cause us to think about life differently. Any loss in life requires some time to grieve. So you could lose a job, you could lose a friend, um, a favorite place, maybe you've had to move and the house you're leaving is your favorite place. You can lose a favorite item, loss of a marriage, kids leaving home, that's a type of loss. Having a family member distance themselves from the family. And I have two of those, a brother, older brother, and a grown daughter. You can lose a parent. The worst kind of loss ever, I think, is losing a child. All kinds of loss in life. So what happens when we we lose things is that our thinking has to change. And uh, you can experience loss in one day and wake up the next morning and your brain starts going down to things and you realize, oh, right, I'm without. And you have to adjust your thinking. Sometimes you have to adjust your life patterns. So we need to learn what happens to us when we experience loss. When we lose a person or a place or an item, our mind works at adjusting and the emotions can be a little bit stubborn. And that's the thing that we need to encourage along. And some of that is going to happen on its own and some of it we can actually do something to try to encourage our emotions along to catch up with our thinking. So distraction is a key component a coping tool that helps our minds and emotions get back in sync, finding balance. It takes time. Some of the adjustment um, just has a natural flow to it, and we just have to let that happen. But some of the time, we can encourage ourselves. Um, we may need to pay pay attention to some things. You know, routines happen, and and. Uh, Sometimes you're trying to solve a problem, so you need to pay attention to certain details to try to work that out. But you still need to bring in some distraction to help give your mind and emotions some reprieve. And one of my favorite stories, true stories, is of Edison, who created the light bulb, <laughs> a longer burning light bulb. Uh, now we have so many options, but if you can take yourself way back to early days, I think it was 1800s, late 1800s. And he was working and working and working and tried to create a filament within the light bulb that was actually going to burn longer than just a few hours. And I remember one of the things they did is they coated horsehair with uh, tar-like substance. And uh, anyway, he, could, he, he had a whole team. I think he had 100 people working, trying to figure this out and solve it. And the big thing is that he was also working on contracts or working with engineers in New York City, laying um, pipes underground for the wires and everything that was actually going to help to gradually light up the city. So it was a big, big deal, big responsibility, but he was in the process of creating and solving a problem. So this went on for a long time, trying different things and nothing was working and I've do you recall that one evening he, he went to bed? I think he had a little bed in his office where all the experiments were going on. He went to bed, he fell asleep, woke up, and that was it. He had the solution, and it was the right solution. And they created a light bulb that burned for about eight hours. So that was a miraculous thing, an amazing thing in its time. But the, the main point of this is that we don't always have to be actively working on a problem in order to find a solution. So we bring in distraction. And I think that, you know, tension and stress is usually an indicator that maybe you need some distraction, so you pull it in. 
Re research shows that using distraction can improve creativity, memory, and focus. So the summer of, t of this year, 2022, now passing into fall, I used a lot of distraction to help process the changes in life. I was going through two main things. One was grieving the loss of my pet, who was a great companion. And then I had another personal family matter that was going on. In 2019, October to December, which what we didn't quite know yet was that COVID was creeping in on us. It had already started in China, but hadn't become a pandemic yet. And that was when I was gradually easing out of my counseling work, gradually saying goodbye to clients and essentially retiring from counseling, not retiring from life or work itself, but just retiring from counseling. I had done it for a long time. I was actually experiencing a bit of burnout and I was trying to work my way through that. And I just uh, decided that, you know, turn 65, I, I just might as well go ahead and retire. So I did. And I took up a part-time job working with a, a greeting card company. And I also got interested in making soaps and doing markets. So I had a couple of ideas. Um, one was to create a business that I could gradually, slowly grow, uh, selling my products through markets. And uh, what was the other idea? I guess just working part-time, having the card uh, job uh, as a nice way to get myself out of the house and get physically active and that sort of thing. I used to joke and say, yeah, none of the cards talk back. They all do what I asked them to. <laughs> Not that any of my clients talk back. So I, I also had a dream of traveling, as a lot of people do when they retire. And of course, COVID and the pandemic put a stop to all of that. I couldn't travel. We couldn't even go over the border. I, I could easily travel over the border to the U.S. and couldn't do that. A lot of restrictions, a lot of things that you all know about because you've been through it as well. So when the restrictions were lifted, thank God for that, uh, April 1st of this year, the borders, Canadian and American borders, finally opened up and, and we could travel. So my husband and I uh, drove down to Cheektowaga, Buffalo Airport area, because we like to watch airplanes and my favorite craft stores are there. And we went to Frankenmuth, which is a little German town in Wisconsin. We did that with friends. I went camping with my daughter and, and youngest granddaughter. And that all of these things were distractions for me. And I knew it. I was grabbing onto them just to take myself out of the house and give myself something completely different to think about. So they all had their, uh, let's say, benefits and purpose. And, of course, you always had to come back home and face reality. But each time that happened, it, it did get easier. Then my husband, who's from Belfast, Ireland, wanted to go home and visit his brother and family. So we planned that trip. Oh, what a trip for me, I tell you. We stayed at a great tiny house, absolutely loved the host. and uh, But unfortunately for me, the airlines lost my luggage and I never got it again uh, until 10 days after I returned home. So I spent my whole visit in Ireland without clothes uh, everybody kept saying, oh, you'll get your bag. And after two, uh, two, two days, I was just washing out the skirt and top that I had every day, hanging up at night. Fortunately, it was warm enough in Ireland, amazingly, and it would dry overnight. Uh, by the fifth day, I said, look, I, I just have to go buy some clothes. And I found a wonderful shop, Madeline, M-A-D-L-A-N, Madeline, and uh, great stuff. And I bought three linen skirts and some tops that I absolutely love. So th those became my souvenirs. And when we came back, we, um, my husband had the whole of summer off, well, the whole of August off, and I had three weeks free. So we decided then to go to Lewiston. And again, I uh, visited my favorite craft stores and uh, we just had a very relaxing time enjoying nature. So those were my distractions this 
year. And uh, okay, so yeah, I do have one final distraction to finish up the year. It is my 25th anniversary this year, and we've been playing that up. Uh, just why wait for one day to celebrate it? Why not just celebrate it through several months? And that's what we've been doing. So that's been a, a lovely distraction. And so now I'm planning a trip to Disney at Christmas time, which is a dream that I had a long time ago. So I think one of the, um, let's say, morals or ideas, a grain of truth through all of this is that we meet up with disappointment in life. That's inevitable. Something is going to happen. And it's how we respond to it that can make a difference. Um, and if you are in a tense, uh, emotionally tight situation, and you know that right now you can't solve the problem, but eventually either you will adjust, your emotions will adjust, your thinking will adjust, your routines will adjust, or you find this great solution to make an adjustment to your circumstances. In the process of all of that, you can actually use distraction to help give yourself a sense of reprieve. So, and one, one thing I love about distraction, the first time I really sort of became aware of its benefits was when my girls were like three and four years old. They were 18 months apart, two girls. And if one of them was whining, as one of them actually, the firstborn did a lot, I thought she was gonna whine and cry till she was 15, didn't happen. Um, but when she was young, she, she cried a lot and whined. And I would use distraction to redirect her, her thinking, let's say her focus, maybe she wanted something, you can't have it, sorry, we're in a store, it's not possible. There's no sense of reasoning with a kid because you're just not going to get it anyway. So you distract them. You say, well, look at this over here. Or, you know, you redirect their focus, which helps them redirect their emotions. So I always remember my psychologist friend who said, little kids have a hard time with their emotions. And that is so true. And we need, as parents, we need to have a lot of patience with our little kids and their emotions and <laughs> some some adults have a hard time with their emotions too. And so um, you can actually distract somebody, an adult, in what they're saying and doing and redirect them. And it's amazing when you when you try that little technique out uh, with other people, maybe even in conversation, you realize, oh, this guy's going off the deep end here. Let's redirect his conversation. It's amazing how it works. It works little secrets on managing life. So, but this thing I wanted to talk to you about was about bringing distraction into your life so that you can use it as a tool to help give yourself some emotional reprieve, helping your emotions to catch up with your thinking. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you gain some benefit from it. And it brings you a measure of peace because that's, that's what we all want, isn't it? <laughs>